Hello everyone, welcome to Auricular Medicine brought to you by Lamp Acu Wellness Foundation, Inc. Our topic for today's episode, Needles, Ear, Seeds, Ear Pellets. Needling is the most common auricular therapeutic modality. Needles can be inserted into any point. Insert the needle, get the chi, then tonify or disperse. Heat is the most desired stimulus signifying arrival of chi. We tend not to needle the heart, brain, ding chuan, vagus because of their strong effect or points on the lobe since the lobe is flabby. For these points, we substitute pellets. However, they are not contraindicated to needle. Short needles, half inch, 15 millimeter needles, should be used since ear points have shallow depth of insertion. The longer the needle, the more likely it is to fall out because of its weight in relation to the depth of needle insertion. If it falls out, it can tear delicate ear tissue. Choose correct gauge and length of needle for ear treatment. To initiate treatment with needles, swipe the patient's ear with alcohol prep or cotton ball wet with 70% isopropyl alcohol. You can ask the patient to swipe his own ear. This simple step involves patient in the treatment process, a useful treatment strategy. Let the alcohol dry naturally. Because of the strength of ear response when treated and the powerful manner in which qi and blood are regulated in the ear, with the exception of massage, normally only one ear is needled or treated with any ear modality. Next, stabilize patient's ear by supporting the back of the area to be needled with non-dominant hand. Care must be taken not to penetrate through the ear with the needle. So, feel the thickness of the patient's ear as you prepare to treat. Position the hand holding the needle as closely as possible to point to be needled. With half-inch needle, use freehand insertion. Insertion tube is not needed for needling ear points, all of which have a very shallow depth of 0.01 inch. Free-handed insertion is more accurate in such a small spatial field. When released, needles should be firmly embedded in tissue and not left hanging in the ear, which is improper needling technique that causes pain, tears tissue, does not allow for tonification or dispersion to be applied to the needle. The secret to reducing pain, either in the ear or in the body, begins with rapid speed of insertion. This swift motion allows for firm penetration of the outermost layer of the skin. Free nerve endings that register pain are embedded in epidermis or outermost layer of the skin. Slow needling causes pain because needle lingers as it passes through this area. When there is pain, patients typically move to try to get away from it. The skin in the point can then tear as patient moves from the needle. After insertion, press the needle slightly into the point, then rotate manually with small amplitude to obtain chi. Chi in the ear typically arrives quickly if ear point location is correct. Various da chi sensations may be elicited in the ear, but from a clinical standpoint, the Chinese maintain that the most desirable sensation in terms of clinical effectiveness is heat. Other sensations similar to arrival of qi in the body are soreness, tingling, referred sensation, numbness, distension, heaviness, awareness of energy, mild electrical feeling, warmth, mild throbbing, spreading or jumping sensation. Patients may be inclined to report that they feel needling as painful. Because of the amount of qi converged in the ear, as well as the ear's degree of vascularization and innervation, one may be inclined to describe the sensation that way. At this point, you should educate the patient as to the meaning of the feeling. That is, perception is qi obtained through proper needling versus pain. Most of the time, qi arrival in the ear is strong and swift. If that chi sensation, the chi arrival, is not perceived, point location is correct and needle is firmly embedded in the point. Angle of needle insertion can be adjusted by making it more oblique, 
directing it upwards or downwards, or medially or laterally. True pain will be elicited through improper needle technique. Which direction to alter needle is impossible to predict or to standardize. Practitioner is encouraged to practice and develop proficient needle technique and to gain his own experience with chi arrival techniques. However, most points are needled perpendicularly. Without delay, as soon as the chi arrives, proceed to tonify or disperse the point, depending upon your treatment plan. Auricular acupuncture tends to have dispersive technique. This is true if too many needles are used or if retention time is too long. Best tonification technique in the ear is simply to exert a small twist in clockwise direction. To disperse, use more vigorous rotation or turn in counterclockwise direction. If rotating needle causes pain versus the chi arrival, turn the needle the opposite way. In this case, rotate the needle once clockwise and once counterclockwise. If there is persistent pain at the site of needling, remove needle and consider other points or other methods to use. If sticking sensation is felt upon needle manipulation, the point is still in need of treatment. Once the tension is relieved or worked out, affected part is considered treated. Often during treatment, the needle that was originally firmly in place falls out of the point. What has occurred is that the chi has arrived and has expelled needle from the ear. This means that the work of the needle has been accomplished. Due to its rich vascularization, ear may bleed easily when needled. If bleeding occurs, allow the ear to bleed instead of trying to stop the flow. Absorb droplets with sterile cotton ball. Wear gloves to guard against transmission of blood-borne pathogens. A small number of needles are sufficient to produce decisive results in treatment. Several needles are sometimes inserted into the same point for added therapeutic effect. Some practitioners let their patients leave the office with ear needles in place. In that case, they need to be told what to do in the event of ear bleeding and how to dispose of the needle properly. This is not a technique that we advocate as there are numerous other take-home modalities from which to choose. Needles are typically retained for 15 to 20 minutes. In acute cases, needles may be left in for several hours without depleting body's energy. Due to its soft composition, do not needle the earlobe. The needle is not as well retained in the lobe as it is in the cartilage or in the connective tissue of the upper aspect of the ear, so other modalities can be selected to treat points on the earlobe. In contemporary China, ear seeds are standard way in which much auricular therapy is administered for virtually every treatable condition. Most commonly used seeds, the semen vicaria or cow's herd seeds, are not chosen for external use due to any inherent medicinal property. These seeds are chosen because they are plentiful, inexpensive, of appropriate size and density to deliver strong stimulus when pressed. Sterilized semen vacaria seeds attached to adhesives, ear plasters, are commercially available for ease of administration. Commercially available seeds are inexpensive and expedite treatment. Place the tape over the seed to secure it in the ear. Ear seeds can be attached to all points in the ear. Effective technique to reinforce a point is to place one seed on the anterior surface of the ear and put another exactly opposite it on the posterior surface. In this way, when they are rubbed together, a stronger stimulus is delivered through heat produced by friction. This technique is especially useful when treating the earlobe. Average retention time of seeds is 3 to 5 days, as long as they do not become wet or humidity levels become too high. 
Instruct the patient to keep the ear seeds dry by covering the ear with a towel or shower cup when washing or showering. In one study, the authors corrected abnormal fetal position in 413 cases of pregnant women by auricular plaster therapy with a success rate of 83.3%, remarkably higher than treatment by knee chest positioning. To relieve discomfort due to gastrointestinal dysfunction following abdominal operations, auricular plaster therapy in combination with stomach 36 restored normal peristalsis within 72 hours in over 92% of cases involved. This was compared with 46% rate in a control group, suggesting that this combined method may promote post-operative recovery of intestinal function. Ear pellets are convenient administering ear acupuncture treatment. They come in sterile silver, gold, titanium, copper, stainless steel. They are affixed to either clear or flesh-colored plasters that can easily be applied to the ear by picking up the ear pellets with tweezers or forceps. The size of ear pellets is perfect for discrete stimulation of the point and almost unnoticeable in the ear. Points indicative of deficiency require gold for treatment. Those indicating excess necessitate silver. Use gold for pain from exhaustion, hypofunction, or pain that increases when specific action of a auricular point is called into function. Silver is used for pain caused by hyperfunction, trauma, or pain that increases at rest and improves with movement. This is an example of gold pellets, and these are silver pellets. If you are not sure what metal to choose, palpate the points with the ear probe. If the pain created by contact with the probe radiates over a large area of the ear, excess condition of hyperfunction is indicated. Silver will disperse the pain. If pain only radiates over a limited area, use gold. Stainless steel and titanium pellets have neutral balancing property and can be used either way, with the therapeutic action achieved by the stimulus versus the quality of the metal. Copper, like gold, as yellow metal is used for tonification. Gold has a electrical potential of positive 0.285 and silver of only negative 0.048 on the basis of hydrogen electrode. In contrast to body acupuncture, incorrect selection of metal of needle manifests itself in the ear with immediate intensification of the peripheral complaints. Practitioners should provide the same written instructions to patients in regard to retention time for pellets, how to press, how frequently, how long, also to keep the area dry. Thank you very much for your attention and see you on our next videos.